Hey guys, welcome back to the range. Today I'm rotating my handgun, uh, quarter inch handgun targets from Challenge Targets. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, they have a very slight concave angle to them. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate them to the other side so that this, the unshot side, gets some exposure. It has been a hot minute, in fact I've never actually rotated these. I rotated the, uh, the rifle ones not too long ago. Um, these are targets that I have relied on for years and they have proven to be invaluable for training purposes and um, I've put so many rounds on them over the years that I've gotten to the point where I don't really think about them anymore uh, which is you know what happens when you when you have something that that you use on a regular basis it becomes so commonplace to you that you don't even really think about it anymore until either something happens or something um, or somebody asks you a question and uh, every once in a while people bring up my targets on my channel and it makes me realize that I really need to be covering this stuff for you guys um, these are quarter inch AR 500 steel AR does not is has nothing to do with AR it actually stands for abrasion resistance and if I remember correctly 500 is its Rockwell cone rating so AR 500 um, armored steel and this stuff sucks up rounds like it's going out of style and like I said I've had these in service for a very long time and just now is the first time that I really feel the urge to even rotate them rotating the way the way I run these without springs normally there are springs here actually yeah no normally the springs would be out front um, all I do is the they go on these carriage bolts and the targets end up um, going directly onto the onto the 2x4 rather than hanging on springs because I, I want these to take hits and then fall over which is what the folding legs are about so all you do is rotate your hardware, lay the target back down again. There are two washers here, I just keep them in place. And it's that simple. And then you put them back on the 2x4s and give them a coat of paint and rock on. These are the only targets that I feel comfortable shooting with my 7.5 inch AR-15 because the velocity is slow enough on this rifle that it doesn't pierce the steel really cause any any really major discernible damage in fact the the bullet hits that I had on earlier I was able to just either scrape off with the bottom of the paint can or take the edge of a knife and just flake them off the steel so these are a very valuable tool because they're capable of taking a lot more abuse than you know most people give them credit for and because of that um, well let me rephrase that they're useful because they take a lot of abuse. They're very lightweight. The way I've built these bases, they're very lightweight. And if you put a tire behind them, when you hit them and they fall down, they land on the tire and it preserves a two by four. So they're actually a very useful uh, target. And pretty much everything I can, everything I need to do with either a rifle or handgun, I can do with a set of these. Um, you could actually get away with really only one if you needed to. Uh, I like to have a minimum of three because there's, well, two is ideal. But I like to have a minimum of three because there's a particular drill called the box drill that I learned from first at, at the Tactical Defense Institute in Ohio, uh, West Union, Ohio, and then um, Dave Spaulding's box drill for handgun combatives. And it is a drill that requires a lot of motion and you've got to move pretty quick during that drill. And it, pay, it pays to have three distinct shooting targets. All right, I've got all three of them swapped out. And as you can see, there's a fair amount of rust on these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them across the gravel road. I'm just going to drag them along on their face and just pull them and use the road to just scrape away 
as much of that rust as possible. Check it out. That's after only one pass. I'd say that's pretty good. On to the next one. Okay, that took longer than I thought it would. This was the toughest one of all. There's a fair amount of rust on it. But I got enough of it off that you can catch just like thousands of little glints of bare steel. So now the paint has enough fresh steel to actually hang on to. Well, actually, what they'll get is a coat of white paint from the neck up and black from the neck down. The stencil I'm using has a chin on it, and it's a chin effect of a person like looking at you like this. So it has to kind of come down to about here. So I need white down to roughly the bolt, and then I can kind of feather it up with a little bit of black. The wind keeps changing on me. Now I gotta do something semi-productive and let these dry in the sun and then I'll come back and put the faces on them. Ideally I would want to do this flat but because this is Walmart paint and not Rust-Oleum it doesn't spray at any angle and once you get about there it just ceases to, to draw into the straw. What I'm, what I'm using is a face stencil that I got from uh, Challenge Targets and you can see immediately what it does for that target. The key markers are the ears. You have to make sure that the notches of the ears, the earlobes, are actually covered but you don't go too high. You want to go straight at it as much as you can so that the stencil is doing its job. Boom! Instant bad guy. As long as you keep your shots down here, you'll never ruin the face. I know that I've been historically a face shooter, but I don't always teach face shooting to, for, you know, for everybody, so that's why I want to have these set up this way. And then you basically just give the body a dusting of black and make sure that the nozzle is pointed down so that it doesn't go up onto the face and you're pretty much good to go. I kind of go back and forth to give him like a v-neck type of effect of a shirt. Needless to say, when you're doing this, make sure that the optic of your rifle or your handgun is covered so that you don't end up with paint across the glass. Ta-da! One down. Like I said, as long as you're shooting here, you never have to worry about ruining this up here.